The Ranger Fuel Saga continues on day two. Yesterday we established that we had no fuel pressure at the rail. Well, we had some, what, 10 PSI? Uh, so we pulled off the fuel line from the tank to the pump, blew air back through it, and established we did have fuel coming out of the tank to the pump, and then uh, turned the key on and it started pulling fuel pressure again. So we're pretty sure there's just a blockage in the tank. So we removed the bed last night and uh, got our first look inside that uh, got our first look inside that fuel tank and it smells terrible to begin with, but it looks even worse than it smells. I don't have a good flashlight, but I don't know if you can see down in there. There's it looks like gold sediment, rust maybe on the bottom of that tank. I'm hoping for the best. I'm hoping that tank is salvageable. I have a pump. I'm going to pump all that fluid out of there. It, that tank is brimmed. Remember, we just filled it when we bought it yesterday. I'm guessing it's about an 11 to 13 gallon capacity. So I'm going to be pumping on this thing for a while, but I'm just going to drain it into multiple gas cans, go dispose of it. Once that's drained down enough, I can get the fuel sending unit basket out of there. We'll take a look at that in-tank pump. I do believe it has an in-tank low volume pump and a frame mounted high volume pump. I think the specs on the in tank were like 15 gallon per hour and the inline on the on the frame is about a 30 to 35 gallon per hour. So I think the issue is our in tank pump is just not supplying the high pressure pump. So we're gonna figure that out. Wow, I had to open up the garage door. This stuff is nasty. I'm gonna pump a little out of this cup just to show you how gross this is. Look at how dark that is. It's nasty. Well, about 400 more pumps and this will be empty. I'm gonna turn the camera off and get to work. Hey, look at all those rat turds. Nasty. Well, we'll get this engine bay cleaned up so I can get back in here and not get the hantavirus. Well, it might not look like it, but it is a ton cleaner in here now that I've pressure washed everything. And most importantly, a locking ring on the uh, fuel pump sending unit is now accessible and I won't drop a bunch of junk into the tank when I knock off the ring and pull the pump out of there. And on this episode of Engineers Clearly Don't Work On Cars, look at that fuel pump placement right on top of that gas tank. Notice anything weird, like maybe the cab overhanging it? Like, come on, Ford, really? Like three inches to the rear? We could have just popped that right out. I have a feeling I'm about to either drop the tank or lift the cab. And yes, ideally you want to use a brass, a brass punch. She's taut like a toyga. Seals rusted on, that's never a good sign. This is looking somewhat promising. These look like new retaining clips, which tells me somebody may have 
already been here and done this. Why is that promising? Well, that means we might get in here and find something not hooked up correctly. Can we swing it out? Oh, just barely. Oh my God. Yep, the sock just fell off. I'm not surprised. There's no float on the sending unit. And look how disgust, oh, look at that. What did I say? Broken terminal on the hot side of the fuel pump. It is a USA pump, a Carter pump. I don't see a date on it. That very well could be original. No, it's got aftermarket clamps on there. If those, if those were original, I'd probably have Ford hose clamps on it. So I'm going to guess this was replaced and broken. So getting another one of these will surf. Well, that'll, that'll check off two boxes. I'll get our fuel level, our fuel gauge back and uh, we'll be able to push some fuel to the front pump. Oh, that's nasty. Look at that. <clears throat> there is a lot of junk down there. Well, I'm guessing buying I'm guessing buying a used gas tank on eBay or something's out of the question. It doesn't exactly seem like something you could ship safely. And the OKQ might be more of a nightmare than it's worth to try to get underneath an old truck and drop a tank out. And I don't even know if they'll sell one, to be honest with you. That seems like a hazard. You get some jack wagon in there smoking or banging on a tank and make a spark and catch the whole lot on fire. So I'm gonna have to pause here and kind of assess on how we're gonna press forward. Surely I can find a parts truck or something on the old interweb, just the way I found this guy. So stay with me. I'll, uh, I'll go jump on the internet and be right back. Well, Ranger day three. Today, we're gonna get this upper intake off since we're on a parts hold for that gas tank and the fuel pump. I just bit the bullet and bought a brand new one from O'Reilly's. It won't be here for another day. So we'll yank the tank out today and then uh, pull this upper intake off and start fixing some of that wiring where the rats had gotten into in the hopes that by Friday evening, we'll be running and driving this thing around the block. This upper intake is very easy. It's just four bolts. They split the plenum in half, thankfully. Uh -huh. Pull off an EGR line, pull off a couple wires, pull off your throttle cable and the whole upper comes off and you've got clear access to all the wiring harness back there. And then I am positive we're gonna find lots of surprises. And just like that, the upper intake is off. It probably took five minutes, honestly. Looks like I might not even need to replace that gasket. Save me a couple bucks. All right, well, let's investigate what the rats did here. Black with white, yellow with red. Those go to something, right? Aha, right there. Probably air temp sensor right in the center of the intake. No idea what this red, oh, that's a front injector. Surprisingly, it was working with these weird butt connectors and wire nuts. We're gonna come back in and heat shrink and solder all this stuff back together. So I have total confidence that this is all good. Well, on to the wiring. I'm gonna go ahead and rip all these spark plugs off too. I've got a cap rotor plugs and wires coming for it. A new fuel pump, a new fuel tank, a new fuel filter. I'm gonna uh, kind of get this stuff out of the way and I'll catch back up with you in a moment. Well, I fixed one power wire. This is the cylinder number one. And see the rats had chewed it up almost all the way back here to the connector. So I'm having to deep in these which is just a simple process of stripping a little wire back. Let's 
and then stuff it back into the harness. Click. There we go. One done. You know, they sell these for about $3, but you know, if you're cheap like me and don't want to wait a week for them to get here, this is what you got to do. I'll click back on injector number one. Okay, now it's good to do the same to number four and then solder their grounds together. And then wire up two and three and solder all of their powers together. And uh, then back to the harness and I think it'd just be waiting for a fuel tank at that point. Well, I burned half my fingerprints off, but I got it done in short time. There it is. I don't know if you can see the black and yellow connectors here. I really only needed maybe a couple inches of wire, but I'll clip those off and solder and heat shrink that back together. And I think that'll wrap up the wire harness repair here under the hood. And then we'll just be waiting on a fuel tank and a fuel pump. Well, under we go. Uh, probably like a 15, 14, 15 mil, maybe a 5 eighths. Uh -huh. That one's all the way up on top. This one's underneath. Again, engineers don't work on trucks, right? Well, let's put a little cologne on that guy. Well, you don't think it smells good? Sure, you can see that very well, but it is just full of rust. That's, that's really not salvageable. It goes all the way to the top, and it smells. It just smells putrid. Luckily, a new tank's only like 90 bucks. So, so new tank and fuel pump shouldn't add more than about 200 dollars to the build. So. All in on the Ranger after Friday, we should be up to 700, and we'll throw 50 in there for plugs and wires, cap and rotor, so 750, I think we'll be in the money there. Well, tank is out, wiring's fixed, about the only thing left in the fuel system that's not going to be replaced is the filter, and we can't have that. As much crap was in the tank, I can predict there's probably going to be equal amount of junk in here. I'm fully anticipating taking a bath here any second. As soon as it falls off that last thread. Just like unscrewing an oil filter, you know it's going to run all the way to your elbow. Oh, yep. That's gross. Well, when I was at O'Reilly's, they asked if I have the inline filter that's got a quick disconnect, the inline filter that screws on, or the canister style filter. And I said, I don't know. I think I had one more for a carburetor, actually. They had four filters for this truck. So I had to run home real quick to check this guy out. You know, you know that doesn't look terrible. I'm not seeing a bunch of rust in it. We're certainly gonna replace it, but I was fully expecting to see this thing just encapsulated in in rust flakes and look at that right to the elbow as predicted whoo i had to open the garage door it is absolutely terrible smelling in here but i want to look in this filter i'm sure you're curious just like me of what kind of junk is in here Ugh. well 
Oh. Here's the fuel. And here's what's in the housing. I mean, I suppose it did its job. Not mad about that. Well, the cheap Ranger just wouldn't be complete without a cheap radio. And I don't even know where this came from. It's been in my basement for, I don't know, four or five years. We're gonna try and stuff that in there right quick. We can do this. Oh, there's no install kit, naturally.